and thank you for joining us for today's webinar. Before we begin, there's just a few housekeeping items that I'd like to speak to. We're all working from home. Um, there might be, you know, dogs in the background or cats kind of trying to get into our offices. I live on a busy street. There might be a siren that goes by. We're just going to work through anything that kind of uh, comes our way, but just noting that, you know, we're, we're doing the best that, that we can while working from home. We do also have a Q&A section and a chat section where you can ask questions throughout the webinar. We are going to be stopping for um, periods of time where there is a section specifically for us addressing questions. So you can either ask them along the way or you can save them for that time as well. Please note that all participants except for our hosts, panelists and guests have been muted for the presentation portion of this webinar. Lastly, also please note that we are recording this webinar. It will be available to students who were unable to attend and for future reference as well. So tonight we will be showcasing one of our two hometowns, Thunder Bay, Ontario. Before we get started, let's introduce you to who will be joining you this evening on the webinar. So to start off, my name is Erin. I am a recruitment officer with undergraduate recruitment. I'm also an alumna of Lakehead University. My role is specifically talking to prospective students who want more program information, who have questions about you know, anything to do with Lakehead, whether it's residents or who to talk to in financial aid and things like that as well. And I'm gonna pass it on to my co-host to introduce herself. Thank you, Erin, and hello, everyone. My name is Melissa Jackson, and I'm the Recruitment and Events Coordinator here at Lakehead University. I was born and raised in Thunder Bay, and I absolutely love it here. I am also a Lakehead University alumna, and I can't wait to share all about our beautiful city and campus with you this evening. I would now like to pass it on to our panelists and have them introduce themselves for you. Hi, everyone. I'm Brittany and I'm in my final year of my honors Bachelor of Arts degree in political science pre-law here at Lakehead University and I'm also a student assistant and tour guide for undergraduate recruitment. And I'm Quinn. I work at Student Central at Lakehead University. I am also a Lakehead University alumni. I graduated from the honors Bachelor of Commerce program a few years ago and yeah if you I'm Definitely can't wait to share everything I know. Um, I also grew up in Thunder Bay and I've obviously stayed, so I've definitely had a great time here. Um, I can't wait to share my city with you. Hi, my name is Selin. Uh, I did my undergrad at Lakehead and I'm currently a master's student at Lakehead as well um, in the social justice studies program. Um, I also have quite a few jobs on campus. So I have a teaching assistant position and I have two different roles um, through the Department of Indigenous Initiatives. And I actually used to bartend and serve at um, the on-campus bar. So um, yeah, I spend a lot of time on campus or I did before COVID and uh, I love this city. Thank you everyone for your introduction. So before we jump into the rest of our slides, I do have a couple polls that I want to uh, launch to everyone here. And so the first one is, what are you currently attending or most re recently graduated from? So whether that's high school, college, university, um, other. So if you went into, you know, something like the trades and, and study with the Red Seal or things like that. Um, so I'm just going to end it in about 10 seconds or so here. All right, so most of you have answered that you are currently in high school. A few of you are in university and uh, some of you are also in college and a couple of you are also, you know, possibly in the trades or things like that and kind of looking at other, uh, other options. So the second poll that I am going to uh, launch is actually just asking um, some questions here about who are you attending the webinar with this evening? So personally, uh, sometimes I have a pet that's nearby who's attending with me, or you know, maybe if you're in high school, you're attending with your parent or your guardian or a grandparent, um, maybe a spouse or a partner, a friend, or just me, myself, and I. Okay, so a lot of you are attending alone or you have a parent near you or a guardian or grandparent. Some of you have a pet, whether that's, you know, a cat, a dog, or something unconventional, like, you know, 
a lizard or a snake or a hamster or anything like that as well, a turtle, a fish. Okay, perfect. So as we move into our webinar, uh, Lakehead is far from ordinary. And if you've already applied, then you're ready for this adventure. If you are still in the process of deciding whether or not Lakehead is the right choice for you, then we encourage you to ask a lot of questions throughout this webinar so we can get so we can work together and help you make this exciting decision. If you take a moment to think about your university years, do you want them to be typical, ordinary, just like everyone else, or do you want them to be extraordinary, exceptional, and unconventional? Imagine, if you will, a university that provides a transformative education that is far from ordinary, a place filled with adventure and excitement. Pictured here is a classroom that takes you into the beautiful surroundings and uses it as a natural laboratory to enhance your studies. This is Lake Tamlin, which is located right in the center of our campus. An education at Lakehead helps shape you and your future using world-renowned facilities and researchers that will challenge and guide you in whichever area you want to pursue. A community that supports every kind of team and is proud of its students and all their accomplishments. This is Lakehead. At Lakehead University, we have much to be proud of. We are the number two undergraduate research university in Canada. We are among Canada's primarily undergraduate universities with McLean's 2020 university rankings placing Lakehead within the top 10 universities in Canada. We're ranked by Huffington Post as one of Canada's most beautiful university campuses, one of the top 10 most innovated or innovative universities in Canada as well. And we're also one of five hidden gem universities in Canada as also rated by Huffington Post. We're looking forward to having you join our Thunderwolf pack. I am gonna launch one more poll before I do hand it off to our next speaker here. So, we just want to know where you're tuning in from. Are you in Thunder Bay in the area and you're just trying to get to know more about our campus? Are you in the GTA? Are you in other parts of Ontario, whether that's around Windsor, Sarnia, up in Kingston, Cornwall area? Or are you in other parts of Canada? Or are you an international student who's looking at coming to Canada and attending Lakehead University? All right, I'm going to end the polling. All right, so most of you, some of you are in the Thunder Bay area, the GTA, but a lot of you are also in other parts of Ontario, which is really great to see. And now I'm going to pass the slides along to my, one of my co-hosts here. Now, please sit back and relax while we explore our Thunder Bay campus and hometown. Thunder Bay is the largest city in Northwestern Ontario. Known for our great outdoors, we also boast an incredible art, music, film, and culinary scene. We're located on the shores of Lake Superior, the world's largest freshwater lake. Thunder Bay is in the geographic center of Canada with the border to the United States just 45 minutes south. Thunder Bay International Airport receives 12 daily direct flights from Toronto from both Pearson and Billy Bishop airports as well as two from Winnipeg and dozens more from Northern Ontario destinations. If you're traveling by road, Thunder Bay is found at the crossroads of Ontario highways 11, 17, and 61. This means those traveling across Canada or north from the U.S. will easily find the city. With a population of around 110,000, we're the largest hub in Northwestern Ontario. Only a 90 minute plane ride from Toronto, we have big city amenities with small town charm. Thunder Bay is one of the largest urban centers between Winnipeg, Manitoba and Toronto, Ontario. A city with deeply rooted European and indigenous roots, we are a very diverse and culturally expansive city. Thunder Bay is sometimes called the Lakehead because it is at the head of the Great Lakes. Not only is Thunder Bay located on the largest freshwater lake, but we're also surrounded by numerous parks and wilderness areas, including the Sleeping Giant. This area has been populated for over 10,000 years. 
the stone tools, spear points, axe heads, and scraping implements of indigenous communities have been found to provide valuable clues in life in the early days. Thunder Bay was formed during the amalgamation of two cities in 1970, Port Arthur and Fort William. Although these cities no longer exist, we still reference them in terms of areas in our city. Port Arthur being the north end of Thunder Bay and Fort William being the south end. You'll often hear these terms used in everyday conversation here. Port Arthur was named after Queen Victoria's son, Prince Arthur. Port Arthur thrived as a transshipment and grain handling port for the CNR after the rail railway line was opened to Winnipeg in December of 1901. The major shipping port was responsible for moving projects from Western Canada through the Great Lakes and continues to do so today. From 1871 onward, Port Arthur was designated as the administrative center for the Thunder Bay District. Fort William was named after the fur trading settlement that formed at the head of Lake Superior, which is where the canoe route from the Great Lakes to Western Canada began. Now, there is a replica along the banks of the Kaministiqua River of the Fort William trade post as it existed in 1816, known as the Fort William Historical Park. This park is open to the public for tours and reenactments. Okay, today, as you can see here, we have breathtaking views of Lake Superior. In addition to the outdoors, we have a vibrant downtown core full of nightlife and restaurants. Thunder Bay's live on the waterfront summer concerts will give you a mix of lively and eclectic music, while the Thunder Bay Blues Festival provides over 18,000 concert goers with an all-star lineup of musicians in the blues, rock, and a little alt country and folk music genres. Thunder Bay's waterfront district provides unique experiences with dozens of local shops, restaurants, cafes, and activities. There is something for everyone. Take in the local street festivals like the Buskers Festival or experience cultures of the world without ever leaving the city at events like the Festival of India and Festa Italiana. Don't miss a chance to indulge at Ribfest. There is so much happening in Thunder Bay. Thunder Bay's downtown shopping area features boutiques, specialty and antique shops, hair salons, tattoo parlors, and much more. The Waterfront District is home to some of the best local dining in town, offering something for every palate. From fine dining to casual, gastropubs to gelato, the food scene is thriving. This is also the perfect place to get out and play. It is rich in art, culture, theater, and recreational activities. Parks and recreation aplenty. Seen here is Boulevard Lake, which is a large public park located in and maintained by the city. The main park includes a playground, a sand beach, a concession area, mini golf, and tennis courts. You can rent canoes, kayaks, and paddle boards to use on the lake. A paved walking path encircles the entire park and lake. It is a very popular path that is full of people walking and biking all year round. In the past, the main park has played host to the Thunder Bay Dragon Boat Festival in late July, a two-day event featuring dragon boat races and live musical performances and concessions. Thunder Bay has many parks, hiking and recreational trails. There are outdoor rinks, dog parks, picnic areas, biking trails, disc golf courses, and more. The Sibley Peninsula, or the Sleeping Giant, as it's known in Thunder Bay, is a natural rock peninsula. The rock juts into Lake Superior, and there are many stories around this landmark and how it was named. One Ojibwe legend identifies the giant as Nana Bijou, who turned to stone when the secret location of a rich silver mine, now known as Silver Islet, was disclosed to voyagers. It is now a part of a national park, and you can camp, canoe, bike, and hike in and around this Thunder Bay landmark. Fort William Gardens is a multi-purpose arena in Thunder Bay. It hosts large sporting events, concerts, and conferences throughout the year. It is also home to Lakehead University Thunderwolves hockey team. The Lakehead Thunderwolves men's hockey team typically plays 20 games at the Fort William Gardens. These games are a great opportunity for students to go out and experience a live hockey game while cheering on the Thunderwolves. Students living in residence also have the opportunity to sit with all of their housemates and peers from residence in a dedicated section. I am now going to pass it to Celine to talk about the next few slides. 
Mount McKay is a large mountain on Fort William First Nation, which is located south of Thunder Bay and is host to a city lookout and sacred grounds for community events like powwows. Just 20 minutes from campus is Loch Lomond Ski Hills, one of two downhill ski areas in Thunder Bay. Located near both Loch Lomond and Mount McKay is an amazing golf course, Fort William Country Club. In and around the city, there are numerous events that celebrate and recognize Indigenous cultures. Fort William First Nation hosts an annual powwow at the Mount McKay Powwow Grounds. Experience vibrant Ojibwe culture with traditional song, dance, food, and more, and everyone is welcome. Other events in and around the city include community feasts, marches, and more. Located on the south side of the city is Loch Lomond Ski Area, Thunder Bay's largest ski hills, featuring 17 runs with levels of difficulty ranging from green to double black diamond. Rental equipment and lessons are available. Other on-site activities include tubing, snowshoeing, fat, bike, fat biking trails, and a chalet area. Located on the north side of the city, Mount Baldy offers a variety of runs and terrain for all ski levels. Rental equipment and lessons are available. Other on-site activities include cross-country skiing, tubing, and a chalet area. Bring seasonal clothing if you visit in the winter as there is much to do outdoors. Blessed with excellent conditions, we're fast becoming a mecca for a variety of winter activities. From world-class cross-country skiing, ice climbing routes, and fat bike trails, to dog sledding and even the exciting sport of snow kiting, hardcore adventurers come to Thunder Bay for some of Canada's best experiences. Other popular winter activities include skating on Lake Tamblin or the waterfront, curling, hockey, ice fishing, ice racing, snowmobiling, and winter camping. Hey, thank you, Celine. Um, now, before we move on to our to tell you more about our beautiful Thunder Bay campus, are there any questions about the city of Thunder Bay? Let me take a look here. Okay, do you see anything about the city? I do see some questions regarding programs that I'm getting back to you on. Is there any Thing about the city of Thunder Bay that anyone would like to know? Okay, we have one here. Um, are there any sections of the city to avoid when looking at housing? So if you're, I think for um, ourselves, if you're a first year, like if you're a first year student, we definitely offer housing on campus, um, which is what we would recommend. And it is very safe. You're on campus, you in residence, um, you have an RA there at all times. And we also have options for once you get into upper years, we also have townhomes and apartment villages. I think that would be my recommendation. I don't know if anyone else on the panel has anything to add to that. Yeah, I can speak as a student who lived on residence in first year oh. and then moved off residence uh, for the other years. Um, when, so, you're, when you're living in Thunder Bay, um, I find like when it comes to housing options, anywhere within like a 20 to 30 minute walk uh, from campus is pretty good. Um, definitely, I would certainly recommend living closer to campus as that's typically where all the student housing is. So students who are moving off campus after uh, their first year will always kind of be in that area. So you'll always kind of be around students. The farther you get into um, more where it's driving distance, you're not really going to see that many students as most of them are around the campus. Um, so if you are looking at uh, potentially living off campus, I would recommend within those neighborhoods that are right next to the campus. And there's plenty of pretty cheap student housing there. Thank you. So I'm just, okay. And then uh, there's a couple questions here about public transportation. Um, and if you need a car to get around town, you don't, we have city buses and actually that is included, I believe it's called a U-Pass. Um, with the university and we have stops around campus that the bus will bring you right to and it's also posted um, the schedule and times so 
you definitely don't need a vehicle to get around the city and we do have city transit. Yeah, and the, some places where the buses don't go, um, residents will like be renting buses and set, like you'll get to experience a lot of Thunder Bay without having a car because residents will take you to places where the bus lines just don't reach. So like as someone who lived on campus, I never once felt the need to have a car. Um, some people did, of course, and it, it was nice, but you can experience everything interesting in Thunder Bay uh, with just using the bus pass and, and using some of the resident services that they have. Okay, and then I see a question here. What about for college transfer students in summer months? Um, we do accept uh, residents in the summer months as well. Um, let me get the exact, I believe it runs from, yeah, and actually for spring and summer residents, um, the applications are open for that as well. So you can stay in residence over those months if you're a transfer student. Someone just asked here, could you say more about housing? So the options that we have, um, we have our shared housing for residents. We have our um, townhouses. We have our apartment villages for, usually those are for upper um, year students. And then as Quinn mentioned, in and around the university, there are a lot of rental properties um, that may be owned privately, but they are within walking distance. And there's a lot of different townhomes and things as well, and apartment buildings too. I do see a question, can pets come to residence? Um, residence has some very uh, specific guidelines that you can bring something like a fish, but they have very set guidelines on um, sizes of, of like tanks or bowls that you can bring. Um, so you wouldn't be able to bring something like a cat or a dog into residence. If you are looking at bringing a pet with you, um, looking at maybe uh, off-campus housing might be the option for you. If you are looking at bringing a pet that is not um, approved to be in residence. And I see a question here that says, when does residence open for fall 2021? So that should be up by the end of this month, the application. Um, and move in day, I know in Thunder Bay is September 2nd, 2021. And if you wanted to come earlier, that is an option as well with, I think it's an extra $25 a day if you decide to come before the move in day. Do you have a question? How far is campus from the city center in regards to walking, driving, et cetera? Um, so probably looking at walking, maybe about like half an hour, 45 minutes, I would say. I used to live sort of near the area and, and kind of near downtown. Uh, and I would walk to campus. It would take about 25 minutes and about an additional 20 minutes or so to get to uh, sort of our Port Arthur downtown core. Um, there are buses available that do bring you to those city center areas as well. So you are able to hop on a bus and you're going to be there within, you know, 15, 20 minutes or not less than that, probably 10 minutes or so, depending on how many stops people get off the bus at. But it is very close, especially if students are looking for different job opportunities. I'm going to roll into another question that's here. Are there many job opportunities for students within the community? There's tons of opportunities for positions for students within the community whether that's, you know, Home Depot, we have Walmart, Superstore. Um, we have a lot of big box stores that students do tend to get part-time positions at. We do also have a work study um, program on campus as well. So students who are interested in uh, working um, just a few hours a week, kind of helping out with the Lakehead community, whether that's uh, our department in undergraduate recruitment, we do take some students as well. There's other departments within Lakehead that look at taking students. So also something to look into as well if you're interested. I see one here too. Are there many vegan restaurants slash restaurants with vegan options? I do just want to say our food scene, or like our restaurant scene here in Thunder Bay is awesome. Uh, we have tons of local places and we do have vegan options. Even um, specific vegan restaurants, like one that comes to my mind is Food Baby, it's 
super delicious and it's vegan. Um, I know there's even a few, like I'm thinking of a few more downtown. The names are escaping me, but yeah. also- There's a know, vegetarian on, burger joint right next to the campus within like a 10 minute walk. Oh, that's the one I was thinking of. That, I couldn't think of the name. That one's amazing. And also in our, in our residence cafeteria, there's lots of options as well. Um, and you can have, you know, if you have kind of any dietary needs, they will meet those. And there's lots of different options, even right inside our residence calf. A question about residence during Christmas break. Residence is, of course, open during Christmas break. We understand some students might not be able to go home, especially, you know, maybe you're an international student and, you know, traveling back home is, is quite, a, quite a long distance and, and time and, and expenses. Residence does not close down during Christmas break. You are, uh, you are able to stay there. So I do see a question here just asking if we have parking on campus. We do. Um, and there are different options um, for parking passes. So I'm just, I know we also have meters around as well. So if you weren't planning on parking all the time, you could pay at a meter. Um, just trying to see if I can find I'm going to share a link and I can put it in the chat for anyone that's interested and you can look up our different parking pass options. It just, some people only want to maybe buy for a month or two at a time, some for a semester and then some for a full year. So I will post that link in the chat for you to follow and look at the different options that are offered. We do have a question about how diverse is the city and Lakehead campus. And I do want to say every year there's more and more uh, cultural events that get added to the community, um, whether it's our Festival of India. We do also have a international um, student lounge on campus and they host a lot of different events to ensure that, that different cultures are very recognized. We do also have uh, an Indigenous lounge and many Indigenous programs for um, students who do identify as Indigenous. We also, there's so many restaurants also popping up around town that do really celebrate the different cultures that are coming into Thunder Bay as well. So we do consider ourselves quite diverse and especially um, as, as students kind of uh, come into Thunder Bay, they also choose to stay in Thunder Bay and they really share their culture with the rest of the community as well. And I just see a question here, just asking again, if there's residents for upper year students. There is, um, we have townhouses and apartment villages. Just, I know there are a lot of questions um, about residents, so I will post a link for people that are interested in that as well. And then maybe we'll just answer a couple more questions before we move on and I can work on typing some back after. There's a question, are there many opportunities in the arts, theater, dance, music? We do have a really big music scene here in Thunder Bay. So if you play an instrument and you kind of want to get into the, the culture of Thunder Bay, we have things like open mic nights at uh, the study. There's a lot of different um, gastro pubs around town that do have uh, stage areas and things like that as well that are always looking for um, some musicians to open up for bands. We also have Magnus Theatre here in town. It is a local theatre that does put on different productions. They are always hosting um, different plays and they're also always putting out different calls for actors or people to help out behind the stage. We do have um, more privately run ones as well, things like Cambrian Players. They also sort of do similar things where they, um, they put on different plays and things like that for the community. And, they're also always looking for uh, different actors or actresses and, and people to help out as well. I just want 
to answer this last one, um, just some said in regards to parking, is it true that you have to pay for a parking pass whether you need to park on campus or not? No, that is not true. Um, you only pay for a parking pass if you decide to purchase a parking pass. Okay, so before we move on, um, I am going to launch another poll. So the poll I'm watching here says, where are you currently at in the application process? Still exploring? Maybe you've already applied, applied and received an offer of admission? or applied and confirmed my offer. I'm just gonna give a couple more seconds. Okay, so that's great to see. It looks like we've had, we have a lot of people here this evening that have applied. Um, some that have already received an offer of admissions, um, some that have confirmed, and some that are still waiting. That is great to see. So now we're going to move on and share all about our campus for you. Awesome. Thanks, Melissa. Uh, so let me share you, with you my favorite place in Thunder Bay, and that is the Lakehead University campus. Um, it is honestly breathtaking once you're on it. Um, so the university campus, it's situated right in the heart of Thunder Bay, kind of right in between uh, Fort William and Port Arthur. So you get pretty easy access to both areas through two bus lines that kind of hit all the main spots. We'll talk about that a little bit more in the future. Um, so the campus itself is like its own little park in the middle of the city. Uh, so it's completely surrounded by fields and green space, and all the university buildings are located in a really nice bunch together. Uh, so it's really easy to access all the university buildings at once. There's underground tunnels that connect them all. So when it's really cold outside, you don't have to uh, pop outside. You just walk through the tunnels to get to the few buildings that you need. Um, and there's Lake Tamblin, which you see in the picture before you. So that's at the very center of the Lakehead University campus. Um, in the winter, as you'll see, it gets paved over and then you can go skating on it, which is really sweet. Um, and so you almost always have some sort of view of the water while you're walking all around all the trails that are around campus. Um, that's one thing that the campus has in spades. There are so many hiking trails that are available to you. Um, they go all around through the different islands and peninsulas, down the rivers, so you can basically like chill on some rocks by the river and read a book while you're studying. It's awesome. Um, and throughout this entire campus, there are 7,500 students at the Thunder Bay campus. So it's pretty big, but also small enough to have that kind of community feel. You're going to recognize a lot of faces while you're on campus. So it's never, you're never really just some other student. You kind of get a sense of um, everyone who's there, your professors are going to recognize you for better or for worse. Uh, so it has a really good feel to it. When it comes to um, getting around the Thunder Bay area itself, um, you will receive a U pass, which is the Thunder Bay bus pass uh, along with your tuition. And that allows you to access um, all of Thunder Bay's public transit from September until the end of August. So for 12 months. And you get completely free access. You just have to flash your student card in front of the bus driver and they'll let you go wherever you want. Uh, so it's really great. I would definitely recommend taking advantage of it. Uh, I know I did certainly when I was a student. Um, you can get to all the main areas that you need as a student uh, using this bus pass and it's just super easy. Um, so after you take a quick flight to Thunder Bay um, and you arrive at the Thunder Bay airport, um, which is the third largest airport, airport in Ontario. So it has a lot of different flights around to different areas if you want to uh, stretch your legs a little bit afterwards. Uh, but yeah, the drive to campus from the airport is only 10 minutes. It's a really short drive. You can get there right away. Um, and then once you're on campus, 
you don't really have to leave unless you, unless you want to go shopping. Um, and so, yeah, the campus itself is really easy to get around to different buildings. Um, the main campus is mere footsteps from residents and athletics. Um, and it's all through beautiful paved trails. Um, the snow plowing team is just amazing and they like just get it all plowed before uh, you have to go to school, like uh, go to your courses at 8.30. I was always impressed by that as a student. I would wake up in the morning and just be like, clean paths everywhere, totally awesome. Um, and so it's really easy to get to the, um, the residence buildings and the main campus and the athletic buildings. Um, it looks really big in this photo, it's literally about a five minute walk. It's really like from uh, the athletics building to residence, super short, it's great. And then when it comes to the actual view, view so we already kind of talked about the parking. As you can see, there is a ton of parking on campus um, and it's really easy. Uh, if you want to park, you can just get to campus right away um, or if you want to live in residence, as you can see, one of our upper year residence buildings um, is right by the campus. Um, and that's, I think, honestly, the, probably the farthest one. The rest are just kind of in the back there. And then when it comes to um, the, your shopping needs, so kind of exploring the city a little bit more outside of the Thunder Bay campus. Um, so all the shopping areas are really close to campus, as we had mentioned. Um, if you're walking, it can be a little bit far. I usually recommend taking the bus, to be quite honest, especially if you're bringing back bags with you. Um, but, I mean, if you want the exercise, it's certainly a pretty nice walk. And then with the stores that are in easy access, we have Superstore, Walmart, Intercity Shopping Center, which is the mall in Thunder Bay, um, kind of like the centered mall in, in the entire area, um, as well as the Thunder Center, which has a lot of uh, different things, like um, a giant tiger, which is might, might be nice for people looking for uh, cheap stuff to fill their residence room. And when it comes to the services within campus, um, and so what you can expect in terms of support as a student, um, this is one of the areas that I specialize in. As I had mentioned, I'm a student central professional, uh, which is part of Student Central, which is basically a one-stop shop for all areas at Lakehead. So we'll be supporting you um, as a new student arriving to campus for the first time, trying to get your bearings. If you have any like questions and you're not really sure, we can help you out. Um, and we'll be there when you are ready to graduate and submitting your intent to graduate, getting your parchment. Um, and so we're with you the entire time. It's a one-stop shop to provide you all kinds of different um, resources you might need and, and help you in different ways. So we do everything from admissions to academic advising for most programs. Uh, if you have questions about registering for courses, dropping courses, want to know certain deadlines, um, if you have questions about financial aid, awards and bursaries and scholarships, uh, OSAP, we do it all. So we're a really good resource. If you aren't really sure who you need to talk to about something, come to us and we can either help you or direct you to the person who can. And so uh, along with this student-centered approach, uh, we also provide a lot of different opportunities to get involved um, throughout Lakehead. So that's one of the things I would always stress to students is that the more you get involved, the more of a good time you're going to have, because um, that's where all the fun is. So getting involved um, to meet new people, the student experience is really important as part of this. And so we have a few things that we set up to help with that. Um, one is there's more than 50 clubs and associations just on the Thunder Bay campus alone. So there is a club for everyone, believe me. Uh, there's, they go from so many different areas, from Drone Club to Great Lakes Surfing Club, Anime and Manga, the Shelter House Volunteering Club, uh, Visual Arts Network, among others. So there's plenty of different uh, areas to get involved, no matter what your interest is. Um, and you'll be able to find lots of people with like-minded interests, from gaming to leadership, student government, music, it's all there. And then when it comes to um, associations, we also have certain associations that students can get involved in, which are program specific, um, such as LUNA, uh, which is the Lakehead University N Nursing Association, ESS, uh, which is the Engineering Student uh, Association, and they are a huge 
uh, a huge influence on campus. Uh, that, that's one of the bigger associations for sure, um, as well as ORSS, uh, which is for outdoor recreation. So a lot of different faculties will have these own associations that are specific to the faculty. They're great ways to meet people, uh, especially in your own program, uh, and to really get a, a, get, get a sense of community right off the bat. Um, and then to track all of these on-campus activities, Lakehead has something called the co-curricular record. So every time you do stuff at Lakehead, you can put this on your record, which is basically your transcript for non-academic activities. So by the time you graduate, you'll have your Lakehead transcript with all of your courses and your grades and your proof of degree on it. And you'll also have this co-curricular record, which you can use to uh, prove all the different types of uh, experience you've had from leadership to um, organizing skills, just everything. So it's really great in that aspect. Um, and you're recognized for both your academics and your extracurriculars as well. All right. So I'm going to hand it off here to Celine and let her take it on uh, next. Thanks. So the Office of Indigenous Initiatives um, assists the Indigenous student population at Lakehead University in achieving student goals by providing a culturally and academically supportive environment. Um, the Indigenous Student Services Center provides a culturally supportive environment to all Indigenous students who are status, non-status, Inuit, and Métis. The office offers a wide range of services such as administrative, academic, individual, cultural, and transitional support. So the following services are available, transitions advisory services, elders in residence programming, including traditional counseling, personal counseling, culturally relevant academic, social, and cultural activities, um, the use of the Indigenous Student Lounge, which contains a light uh, kitchen facility, a study area, socializing area, and telephone for local calls and six computer stations. And that's a really good place to study, especially if um, it's around exam time and the uh, library is pretty full. Um, and then referral to other Lakehead University services and an online speaker series that's actually going on right now, I think. Um, so, Indigenous students are encouraged to self-identify through a confidential survey. It ensures that students can connect with the Indigenous Initiatives mailing list and receive information about the supports available to them. So, your time as a student will be a one-of-a-kind, um, but we also want you to feel like part of the Lakehead community. So, starting with orientation in September, our Student Success Center offers several student appreciation events throughout the year to help students de-stress and refocus. You won't be alone as a Lakehead student. We're here to help. Our supportive and student-centered philosophy gives you the highest potential for success. You matter to us and we're here to help you from your first day of class as a new student right through to graduation. We also offer many academic supports in our academic support zone through the Student Success Center. These supports include academic advising, tutoring, and peer assistive learning, math center, writing center, career counseling, resume writing, and more. Other supports for students include student health and wellness, student accessibility services, financial advising, and Pride Central and gender equity, and many more. The Thunder Bay campus offers you the best of both worlds. From the state-of-the-art state technology to the historic landmarks of Thunder Bay to act as your academic backdrop. In this photo, you can see the Advanced Technology Academic Center, ATEC for short, on the left, and our cases building on the right. So the ATEC building contains numerous classrooms, multimedia production, and teaching services, enhanced distance education facilities, computer teaching and research labs, and a high-performance virtual reality room. Lakehead state-of-the-art Cases Research Building, also known as the Center for Advanced Studies in Engineering and Sciences. So the Cases Building features many new research and laboratory service spaces, providing students with more opportunities to engage in hands-on experiential learning right on campus. The new building is designed to meet LEED Gold certification, aligning with the current research of environmentally sustainable infrastructure at Lakehead University. CASES building is also home to the Aboriginal Mentorship Program, the Biomass Utilization Laboratory, the Laboratory for Integrated Freshwater Science, the Office of Sustainability, 
Ingenuity, a business incubator space, and more. We offer small class sizes with a student to faculty ratio of 15 to 1. 90% of our classes have less than 60 students. At Lakehead University, you're more than just a number. Your professors get to know you by name. You're not just a face in the crowd. This is one of my favorite parts of being a Lakehead student. We encourage students to take a break from their studies and to take advantage of our media athletic options on campus. With indoor tracks, weight rooms, an Olympic-sized swimming pool, a hot yoga studio, and many varsity and club-level team options, there's something for everyone. And if being on the court is not your thing, we encourage you to cheer for your Thunderwolves and attend a home basketball, hockey, or volleyball game. For more information on getting active and involved at Lakehead, attend our webinar on March 2nd. Other great spots on campus for students include the Study Coffee House, the Outpost, and the Bike Shack. The Study Coffee House is every student's easygoing coffee shop. Drop in before class and grab your organic, fair trade, or local coffee, latte, loose leaf, or bagged tea, and a little snack from local vendors. Nothing makes the brain work better in the early morning. At night, bring your instruments and join us for open mic nights where students can share their talents with others and among friends. The Outpost is your campus pub. It is a full service restaurant as well as a concert venue. There's evening programming for everyone to enjoy from sports fanatics to those who love to dance. Lusu's Bike Shack offers cyclists a place to store their bikes safely and out of the weather. Join hundreds of students in their efforts to be sustainable and active. There is typing away behind the scenes there. There's a little bit of a, of a delay with some of them. Um, so people have been asking questions along the way and I encourage you to keep asking questions. We are going to take some of them live and I'm going to request that Melissa also help me answer some of them along the way. Um, so I know that there were some questions in regard to when students can receive um, offers of admission. Um, there's a number of questions and I'm just wondering if Quinn, if you wouldn't mind kind of um, touching on that a little bit being in Student Central. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so in terms of the uh, admission requirements, it really uh, does depend on your academic background. It is so different uh, for every student. Um, that being said, there are a few key things. Uh, typically, if you're applying um, out of high school for the majority of our programs, um, it would be a minimum 70% average with your top six grade 12 URM credits. Um, and then if you're applying from a university, like you're transferring from a university or transferring from a college, um, we do have... Um, called the transfer pathways that can um, set you up and you already get the transfer credits kind of baked in and just start in you know, like year two, three, or two or three of the program, uh, which is nice. You can, you get, a, you get to skip a few years. Um, I would say if you're unsure about if you meet the admission requirements or not, or if you're um, just trying to figure out what they are, uh, contact us at Student Central. Uh, where we will just like help you out, get you the links that you would need, just provide as much information about your academic background as possible. So we know what to uh, help you out with. Um, you can also find it on our website. I often find a really easy way to just get the information you're looking for is to click apply now in the top right hand corner of the website. And then it will bring you to a list of different applicant types from college transfer student to high school student to non-Ontario high school student. Um, and then from there, it's pretty easy to find the admission requirements. Uh, but we're definitely here to help you. Uh, if you have questions, you can email us or call us during the day um, and we can answer any questions you might have. Awesome. And I'll put the uh, number in the email in the chat so you can find it. And that's to Student Central. Thank you, Quinn. Um, another question that we have here, what are the expectations alongside living in residence? So residence does have some expectations. I mean, obviously not having like a party in your room, uh, inviting a bunch of people who don't live in residence into your room and things like that as well. Um, residence does go through expectations with you as well, things that you can and cannot bring into your room. We are also going to be talking more about residence with 
resident staff as well in one of our upcoming webinars. So we can definitely try and touch on some of those. Um, Melissa has put in some links so far for uh, residents that you are able to check out. Some of those questions might be answered within some of those uh, residents links as well. But again, we do have a future webinar that does focus specifically on residents and the expectations, things you can or can't bring onto campus, deadlines and things like that as well. Uh, there's a really interesting process that they have with uh, residents as well and, and when they're selecting people to kind of be on the same floor. So definitely stay tuned. Um, we do have our upcoming events page. I was going to get Melissa to post it a little later on. Unfortunately, I can't access links because I have the slide up, but I was going to get Melissa to post it a little later on. We do have upcoming events and we do have a page that shows all of our upcoming events. So even if you're interested in learning more about athletics or our student services center, we do have webinars for those. So Melissa. Yes, I will. I'm going to post that I have that link ready to go. Perfect. Um, I'm just, I'll wait a little closer to the end just so it doesn't get lost in the chat there for everybody. Thanks, Erin. Um, so another question, um, how slash when do we select our courses after we've accepted an offer? So um, I'll touch a little bit on this. Um, we do open up course registration in the summer to students once you've accepted your offer. Um, we do offer um, or have previously offered fast pass through our student central and they assist first year students in figuring out the courses that they need and registering for those courses and those are things that you do have to sign up for as well. Um, Quinn, I don't know if you want to clarify that a little bit. Yeah, for sure. I can certainly speak a little bit on a fast pass. Um, one, I would say it is so useful. Fast pass is like if you can attend it fantastic. It is such a useful tool. It basically goes through everything that you would need to know to register for at Lakehead. Um, so it goes through the academic calendar. So you get a sense of where to find policies, add dates, drop dates, and then you actually start building your timetable, uh, where to find your program requirements, and then you put that in and then actually register for courses. So over an hour, um, you get a lot done and you learn a lot. So I'd certainly recommend that as a starting point. Um, in terms of just general uh, registration, Lakehead has a lot of different registration videos um, that we also post on our website. So if you can't attend a FastPass session, um, if it, we have like a lot, so pr you probably will be able to attend them. There's like 30 at all different time frames. Um, some specifically for international students if your time zones are wonky. Um, so you most likely will be able to attend a fast pass session, but we also have a lot of different resources that are available online too. Um, if you're having trouble figuring out after even attending fast pass. Um, yeah, if, if there's anything specific you have questions about, uh, just put it in the chat and I can answer them as best I can. Thank you, Quinn. Thanks, Quinn. We do also have, um, does the university have LGBTQ student groups? Is the community of Thunder Bay relatively progressive? So on campus, we do actually have Pride Central and Gender Equity Offices within the community of Thunder Bay as well. Um, we have uh, associations like Thunder Pride. We do have a lot of um, different uh, Pride events as well that go on within Thunder Bay. Um, I would say that we that it is relative, relatively uh, progressive. We uh, Year after year, there's more and more events that are added. There's more and more associations in regard to student groups. There is a list of clubs that are on campus as well. Um, maybe I can get Melissa to post that if she has access to that link. Um, if there isn't a group that's already been started, so these are student run groups. So sometimes when students graduate, there isn't a group of students that go on to carry on that group. So if there is a group that students ever do want to start up, we do encourage you to start that group. Sometimes it may have been started, you know, maybe five years ago, and because of those graduating students, it didn't get continued on. So if there is anything that you did want to start up, um, if there isn't anything that's there already, we definitely encourage you to do so. I just want to add to that, Erin, too, that, so she did mention Pride Central, and that is a service center um, that we have right on campus. And it offers a variety of social services. It's got a resource library of books, movies, music, um, and throughout the school year, our activities include like awareness campaigns, discussion groups, movie nights. Our biggest event is a week long queer pride celebration called Pride in the North. And I will post the um, 
link for all the different clubs that we have. Perfect. Thank you, Melissa. We do also, can you move into residence on a date other than September 2nd? So you can move in a little bit earlier. Um, you do have to pay per day that that's leading up to residence move-in date. You can move in after residence move-in date if you're just not able to, you know, maybe you're driving up to Thunder Bay, you're not able, able to figure out piling everything into a vehicle to move up here. You're going to move in a couple days later. You are able to do that as well. Um, we do recommend obviously not moving in once class starts just because there's so much on your mind. There might be a few things that you miss. So just making sure that you kind of move in before class, but just because it's residence move-in day doesn't mean that that's the day that you're stuck to. Uh, there is a little bit of leeway. Again, prior to you're paying leading up to it, but afterwards there is that leeway. There is a question here as well that says, how many sport teams does the school offer and what are some examples? I don't have the exact number, but I'll go through examples of our sports teams. Um, we have our hockey, we have basketball, uh, women's and men's, we have volleyball, wrestling. Am I, what am I missing? That's what I can think of off the top of my head. So there's definitely a lot of sport teams and Lakehead is very proud of our teams and the games are always full with fans cheering on. And it's just a great kind of thing to do with your friends or your residence housemates um, that you live with as well. And I do want to mention we have varsity uh, intramural and club sports as well. So um, if you are looking at, you know, trying out for our varsity teams, whether that's our men's hockey, uh, wrestling, you know, those teams do compete against other universities. Um, but when it comes to, um, you know, maybe like an intramural sport, or if you wanted to start up a league, if you didn't see something that that really interested you or something that we didn't offer, we have had in, some of our international students start up uh, like a cricket league, uh, just because that's something that we didn't previously offer as sort of just a, a, a fun team sport. So if there is something that you are looking at starting up, again, we definitely encourage you to, to try and do that and, and see if there's other teams that you can kind of build and really advertise that as well. Um, is Fast Pass online only? Um, so last year it was. I can't speak for this year. Um, I don't know if Quinn has any other information from Student Central. <laughs> We haven't decided uh, yet, for, uh, to my knowledge. I don't know um, what the status of the Fast Pass is, but when we post all of the dates and times that will be there, um, you'll be able to see what method of delivery it will be, whether it will be in person or online. Um, so you'll know more information soon. And I see here as well, someone asks, is there a specific time to move in? So again, the date for residents is September 2nd, and students may start moving in at 9 a.m. Uh, another question, is there a frosh day? So students who are moving into residence, the residence staff really does a great job at making sure that you're getting out there and you're meeting other people uh, from your residence as well. And they sort of do kind of almost like a week long activity of just different, uh, different events that they kind of host, whether, you know, it's competitions between the different houses and residence as well. And they really encourage you to, to meet other students on campus, other students on, on your floor, in your house. Uh, there are residence advisors as well and uh, house presidents who really encourage that throughout the year, um, but they do encourage that leading up to orientation and, and during orientation as well. So there isn't just a day that that happens, there's so much more to it. Yeah, that can, I can talk a little bit more about orientation too, because this is something that is for everyone. So even all of you people in Thunder Bay, I know not many people in Thunder Bay attend orientation. But I did, I'm one of the pictures. <laughs> you absolutely <laughs> should, to be quite honest. It's so much fun. Um, it is giving you so much information. Basically, um, it, you kind of get the whole aspect of how Lake University runs, all the different services on campus. You know where to find everything. Um, you know who to talk to about certain things. And that way, when you're actually studying and you're hunkering down, you don't have to worry about figuring out, oh, if I have a question about this, I get, I'll just like come to Student Central, of course, and we'll help you out for sure. <laughs> but um, it, 
orientation is, is a lot of fun, but you also learn so much. It kind of just, it gets you hitting that ground running. Uh, and so it's something I would certainly recommend to everyone. Um, invaluable experience for sure. And you meet a lot of people. So when you go to the first day of class, you're like, oh, I know you, we hung out. So that also, is also nice. That. I mean, being in Thunder Bay, um, you know, obviously being outside of Thunder Bay, you don't know that many people coming here, if anyone. But also being in Thunder Bay, I also find that the high schools that you go to, you don't really meet anyone outside of them. That it's kind of, you know, your group that you've possibly gone to school with for the last, you know, 12, 14 years if you, if you did JKS came. And so orientation I found was really helpful in meeting people from other high schools that I normally wouldn't have met. And so Quinn is right. I mean, I walked into my first year psychology uh, intro course and I was able to point out like, hey, I met you at orientation. And, and it felt a lot more comfortable knowing that I had met these people and we were all kind of on the same same playing field that, you know, we're meeting people from other other high schools and then also from people outside of Thunder, but you're meeting people from across Canada or internationally as well or across Ontario. I see a question here that says, will there be webinars for specific facilities? Um, so yes, we have upcoming webinars. Also, we have upcoming webinars with faculty um, as well. So I'm going to be posting that link. You know what? I'll post it right now in the chat. I'll post it a couple times <laughs> before we leave too. So everyone has a chance to get that. But just to give you an idea, we have a residence and housing webinar coming up. We have a financing webinar. Um, we have a family and supports info session, registering for courses. And then we have Faculty Fridays coming up with some faculty members. So make sure to check out our event page and I will post the link where you can see those webinars and register for them. And make sure you, the link I'm gonna post as well, go back to it too. Even there'll be more posted next week and the week after we're always posting new events. Right. Um, let me see here. I see a question about um, orientation. Do you have orientation um, focused on mature students? Um, it's part of the same orientation. Uh, there are events specific to mature students. Um, and that's as much as I know right now, uh, but there's not necessarily a separate orientation. It's just all wrapped into the same thing. Um, but orientation typically lasts a while. So you can go to like, just pick and choose the events you want to go to and then enjoy a coffee somewhere else while you're waiting for the other events, if, if that's what you want to do. Right. We do have another question. Are classes virtual right now? I know it's hard to predict. Is there any potential that classes in fall 2021 will be completely virtual? So as of right now, we do have classes that are completely virtual. We do have some labs that are in person just because they're you're not able to complete the labs without being in person. Um, the faculty is following guidelines in order to be safe as well in those classrooms. We don't have any information on fall 2021 at this point. We are hoping that uh, information will come out in the coming months. Um, we do have a COVID-19 uh, update page as well where we do release any information and any updates that come along to current students, future students, um, faculty, employees, and things like that as well. And so I'll get Melissa to post that in the chat for any students who do have any questions. And again, we do update that as updates come out. So it is definitely good to save or to have tabbed or bookmarked as well. So when you do have those questions regarding um, the upcoming year, you can definitely refer to that. And if there is an update out, it will be on there. And I did write that in the chat for everybody. Thank you. We do have, even if classes are virtual, is residence still open to live in? And yes, residence is still open to live in. We do have uh, students right now who are living in residence and they are attending their courses. And I see Quinn also answered that as well. Um, they are taking their courses online and they have chosen to come up to live in residence um, and it is open to students. So if you do choose to come up to Thunder Bay, you are able to live in residence. We're not gonna close the doors and, and have you drive all the way home or anything like that. You can stay in residence. And there are students on residence right now. 
Awesome. I also see here a question that was asked earlier. I didn't answer, answer someone already, but I'll put it as a live answer. Um, are you, if you're applying from high school, when should you expect an acceptance? Um, so we do two different rounds. The first round is in March and the second round is in May. Um, so only our early offers have gone out yet. Um, all of our main offers have yet to go out. So if you haven't gotten an acceptance by this point, don't worry. That's completely normal. Um, the first round isn't until next month. Thank you. And I do see a question here. Is there a hospital nearby? There is very close, actually. Um, the Thunder Bay Regional Hospital is almost directly three, across. Three minutes? Yeah, yeah like, it's, all like I would just, it's like directly across the road. There's even a set of lights and you can just walk nice. Like you don't have to run across. Um, yeah, three minutes, I would say. So, and that's our main hospital here in Thunder Bay. And it's, yeah, right across the street from us. And I just see something here in the chat, just asking about uh, professor webinars. Um, so again, yes, our faculty Fridays that we will have coming up um, and we'll also have some program and faculty showcases coming up a little later in March as well. Those can be found on the event link that I posted and I am gonna post again. I, so right now, that's where you'll find them. So as I mentioned earlier, we are gonna be posting more next week um, that you'll be able to register for those webinars. So you might not see them this evening or tomorrow, but next week there'll be some more posted. Great. Do you have to live on campus or move to Thunder Bay if the September semester is online? So we had a number of students choose to not move to Thunder Bay um, when they found out that, that all of their classes would be online. Um, some students may have um, a lab in person depending on the program. So whether it's, you know, our natural resource management program has some in-person labs, some of our nursing uh, program as well. And um, so working with faculty to ensure that you can complete those labs virtually um, is recommended. But if you do decide, if you find out that, you know, maybe you're in the English program, and all of your classes would be online. It is up to you if you want to move to Thunder Bay or not. All right. It looks like we answered all the questions. <laughs> if anyone else has any other questions, we will um, stay online a little bit longer as we um, end the webinar mm -hmm. as well. So we're not cutting you off. I'm just going to move on to the next few slides as we don't have any questions here. Perfect. Before you do that, um, I do, I did have one answer here where I didn't quite understand your question. I'm sorry. Um, I, I asked you a little, for a little bit more information. If you want, you can just email studentcentral at lakeadu.ca. That's the email that I check um, and provide some, uh, some clarification and we'll be able to answer your question for you. So sorry if we don't get to it today, uh, but just email Student Central and we'll get you an answer. Thank you, Quinn. So if anyone does have any more questions, again, we'll be checking them. We're not just going to end the webinar and leave a few of you hanging. So continue to ask those questions if you still have them. Um, but for those of you who don't have any questions, I do want to thank you so much for joining us for our webinar. As we've mentioned a few times so far, we do have a lot of upcoming events coming up. Melissa has posted that link a couple times now. Um, we are going to be updating it, especially with things like our Faculty Fridays coming up, where you're going to be able to see some of our programs like kinesiology, psychology, and more as we mm -hmm. confirm those and get them posted as well and open them up for registration. So if you are interested in learning more about those programs that, you're, that you've applied to or are looking to apply to, or we also have more sessions coming up with specific departments. So next week we have our athletics, following weeks, we have residents, Student Success Center, and things like that as well. So definitely check out our upcoming events. There is always something to check out on our website. We do also, um, I'm not sure if our chat with the recruiter is up yet, but we will be opening up uh, sessions where you can chat with us live. So not like a webinar setting, but a meeting setting. There, you're able to just have a conversation with us, pop in, ask a question, and you know, kind of head out once, you're, once your question is answered. We do also do 10 to 8 meetings. So a bunch of us in recruitment do take meetings for students who have quick questions, maybe about different programs that they're looking at. 
That is also available on our upcoming events page. If you scroll down to the bottom, there's a few of us. It does uh, refresh with our schedule as well. So you are able to book when we're open. We're not gonna double book you or overbook you or anything like that. It does reflect our current schedule. So we have that time slot available for you to connect with us. And just to wrap it up and end, we do also encourage you to follow us on social media. We do release a lot of different updates through Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. We do put a lot of videos out on YouTube as well, just showing things like, um, you know, mature student transfers, uh, things about Lakehead as well. So you can find us at My Lakehead on all of them except for Facebook. We're just under Lakehead University. All right. We do have uh, some more questions coming through the Q&A, but for everyone else who has joined us, thank you so much. And I hope to see you in September. I see here a question about, are gap year students in the same residence as direct from high school students? Does anyone know? <laughs> I, I can answer if no one else knows. Yeah, so um, if you want, if you apply to live in the Bartley or Pretty residence, then you would be with uh, direct from high school students if you're living in those residence buildings. Um, there may be, other students who are mature students as well who are in first year who live in those buildings too so it's not always just direct from high school students that may be living uh, in those apartments in regard to residence as well you do have your own room in Bartley and Preddy residence so you know you're not sharing if you are a mature student you're not sharing uh, with a direct from high school student or anything like that you do have your own room uh, I don't know if Quinn you want to add anything to that but yeah that's that's basically the, the gist of it. Um, if, if you want to live with students who are, it's like usually their first year of university, that's definitely Bartley residents. Um, I would not recommend someone who is, it's their first year to, to go anywhere but Bartley. That's what Bartley is for. Um, if you, if it's, you've been to university before, it's like a transfer student or something like that, and you're just looking for a place to live on campus, meet some students, but you don't really want to be with a bunch of first years, uh, then I would certainly recommend apartments and townhouses as they're the place to be for sure for those types of students. And just to add to that, if come out to our residence and housing webinar, and that's up there and you can register, that's happening on May 4th, and you will hear from individuals from residence and housing. You can ask those very specific questions too. I know someone asked about pets and things like that. And I know that there's guidelines, um, but they can go, they can go through it in much more detail than, than we can. So, what is the deadline for transcripts for applications? I don't know if Quinn- I'm just currently <laughs> answering your question right now. Uh, basically just to say it, uh, the, Deadline will be on your conditional offer letter if you receive one. Um, in order to be able to provide you a conditional offer letter, we need to receive um, unofficial transcripts at the minimum uh, for your all of your academic record. All of that information will be on your my info, seeing like what we need. Um, and then once we give you an offer, it will have the deadline for your official transcript. All right, I see a question here in the chat, pretty detailed. I'm gonna answer you, uh, but let me uh, read it here and I'll just type my answer for you. Thank you, Quinn. Thanks, Quinn. All right, if anyone still, we do still have a few more participants. If you have any questions whatsoever that you would like to ask us about Thunder Bay, about our campus in Thunder Bay, please feel free to do so.
Um, when does the lake on camp campus typically freeze enough to skate on? So it does depend year to year. Um, I mean, sometimes weather is unpredictable. Sometimes it could be December. Sometimes it could be January. Um, I believe this year, um, I remember receiving an email on January 28th, the day after my birthday, <laughs> saying that the lake was uh, perfect to skate on. And I did have to check last week as well with physical plants. Uh, they check on the ice uh, to make sure that it's still good. And last week it was still good to skate on. We have had some warm weather uh, today and I believe yesterday was a little warm. So I'm unsure if the lake would be safe at this point, but they do release information to students through email, through media relations and bulletins, letting students know if the lake is safe to skate on or not. So definitely something to, to check out when you're a student, check your email, make sure that the lake is safe before you go onto it. Um, but it does vary year to year, but usually December, January is when you can expect that the lake is frozen. Does the library have quiet zones for studying and late hours? Um, so the library does have quite a few floors. So the first floor, maybe not so much for a uh, quiet study, but there are rooms on the first floor for students to rent out. Um, there are, I believe it's the fourth floor of the library that is more of a quiet zone. Um, I don't know if Brittany or Celine, as current students, if you want to comment on maybe the best quiet areas in the library to study in. Um, yeah, so Lincoln has a couple quiet floors. Um, the second, third, and fourth floors are all considered quiet floors. The fourth floor, actually not so much because those are where um, there's more group study rooms that you can book out. And then there's a couple tables in the middle as well. But the quiet areas are one of my favorite areas on campus. Um, it's where you'll find me most of the semester. It's just a great place to escape and do your homework and you're in your own little cubicle and they're really safe. Yeah, I agree. Um, I actually have, there's a, another lounge available for master's students. And usually I prefer to work on a quiet floor in the library just because um, the lounge isn't designated as a quiet area. So if you wanna actually get some work done, then that's probably the best space to be. I'm glad I reached out to you guys. I was not that student. I- <laughs> You were in the learning commons just- I, I did not find the anymore. quiet floor. So I, <laughs> I, was, uh, I was the student who was the first floor of the library or I don't know if this would age me as an alumna, but before the basement was renovated, that was that was my area. There used to be tables and things like that. It was not a quiet area. <laughs> it doesn't look like there's any more questions. I think Quinn is still typing away for the, this uh, one question here, but I do know that there's still some of you in the audience, if you do have any other questions before we end, please throw them in there. Um, otherwise, we will end our webinar. All right, well, thank you so much to those of you who did kind of hang on until the very end with some of your questions. We truly appreciate it and we love answering questions that students have. Um, thank you so much for joining us and I hope that you have a great rest of your evening. Uh, it's only 8.20 so not quite bedtime for some of us but <laughs> and thank you so much to our panelists as well for joining us and for offering some of the, the student perspective and Quinn for um, your student central and student success center perspective. Have a great evening, everyone. Thanks, everyone.